Hey guys, I get asked what my build is, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown here. This character is not optimized at all, and I've seen many comments about like my damage being shit, and it is, and that's on purpose, because if I have a lot of damage, I tend to kill things way too quickly, and if I go crazy, as I've seen some players do with like their one-shot builds or whatever, it just the game's just not fun at all for me. To that end, I do use pieces of Amino Uzume's Grace, but I specifically avoid Death Dancer, which pretty much gives you like 70% damage boost if you have 9 stacks, for the if you satisfy the conditions. Now, I avoid that, but in any case, so again, I don't go for damage, because it is antithetical to how I want to play. My play style is as simple as this. I want to be as aggressive as possible, and have combat last a good chunk of time and the thing is if I kill enemies too quickly then it just it's like pretty anticlimactic so I like to find a certain sweet spot where I feel like I can go all out and have the enemy go all out and so I can have kind of that situation last for like two three minutes or whatever depending on the enemy um, normal enemies I don't care but for like bosses I like to have I would say around a three minute boss fight where I'm doing absolutely everything playing on point because that's just what's satisfying to me and that's going to be different for other players i've seen players do level one weapon stuff i've seen players do just like no armor stuff and again it's just a matter of what's enjoyable to them and this is what's enjoyable to me but enough about that what exactly am i using to facilitate this style of play and please note this is not optimized there are better things that i could be doing but the fact of the matter is i'm pretty lazy so let's get to my armor first at helmet this is intentional I like Hat Helmet because it has these, uh, this faster key recovery speed when I wind an enemy. So I get to have key recovery and it's pretty great. I get more key because I want as much key as I can have. Enemy sensors so I know where enemies are. Again that's pretty obvious. I happen to get starred anima which is great. Um, I think if I were to get other things it'd be like get starred key but that's pretty marginal. And then I think maybe Anima Charge Melee Attack, but I haven't had the luck for that. I don't even really need it. It's nice, but I don't need it. And then Other Realm Resistance, so that my key recovery is not impacted as much. Now when it comes to Ame no Uzume's Grace, I am actually only interested in the 3 and the 4 piece bonuses. I use Dodge Attacks a lot. It's part of my playstyle. And so this suits me really well. And being able to get a movement speed buff and a key recovery speed buff functions beautifully for my style of play that's why i have it really no other reason i don't even need the dodge range up i have it on my boots and i'll get to that in a second but everything else is just extra so next up is pit viper life just i mean i don't really need it but i don't know what other stat to put on it life recovery amrita absorption is intentional basically anytime you use a yokai ability or just there's so many different sources that generate Amrita naturally, I get life back, so that helps. Faster win and recovery is very much intentional as well. You should have this on all your characters no matter what. Uh, basically, you get winded, you don't want to stay winded as long, so just truncate the recovery time. Very much intentional. The paralysis resistance, the reason for this is actually kind of silly. I hate gakis. I hate getting hate I hate getting paralyzed by them, so I got paralysis resistance. That's it. The defense bonus based on gauge, well hey, why not? I'm using light armor on all my pieces of armor, so might as well get some benefits to my defense so I can survive a little bit more. And I've got my, it's based on gauge because I hardly go into yokai shift. Now the, you may be asking why am I using pit viper and again, key consumption and key. That's it. I just don't want to use as much key and I want to have as much key as I can. Are there better things I could be doing? Yes. And I know there is. And I'll get to some things that I could do to improve this. Next is Red Demon Armor. So before I get into the stats, I'm going for the active skill key consumption here. That's it. I don't even use Spearfall. So it's literally just there for the key consumption. Here I've got equipment drop rate, which is uh, pointless. I don't really need it. Toughness, I guess, is nice because I don't know what else to get. The inherited defense is pointless. I don't really need it. <laughs> it's just there and I'm too lazy to switch it out. Melee attack key consumption is something I really wanted because again I want to be as aggressive as possible. Extended course nullification so I happen to actually get really lucky to get both of these on the same gloves so it's great but extended course nullification I found that just this extra nearly 40% 
helped with my combat flow so that I could basically keep the curse off at all times without it being like, I don't know, too egregious. I don't need any more. Plus 40% is already enough for me. Next is Pit Vipers, the leggings. Dodge key consumption, dash key consumption. Again, it's just a theme of reducing my key consumption in general. Key recovery bonus so that I can get key back faster. Running speed, of course, so I can move faster. And then extended timely guard window just helps my margin of error so I don't have to be absolute top form when I want to get parries or timely guards off. It, it helps. It, sorry, it doesn't apply to parries, but timely guards that are parries, whatever, like back wave tempest or spinning slide. So it just helps. I think it's like a frame or two, but again, I notice it. So it helps quite a bit. Red Demon Greaves. This Amrita earned is pointless. I don't need it. It's just there and I'm too lazy to switch it out. Tenacity damage over time is the second premium stat you should have on pretty much all of your characters. You don't die to damage over time. I mean, what's not to love about that? I, I've known many situations where, hey, I didn't just get the fire out in time or poison slowly killing me. And just having this just makes it so I don't die from those sources so I can pop an elixir if I choose to do so. Dodge range up is really good. That's self-explanatory. Dodge key consumption, again, fits a the theme of me consuming less key. Extended dodge and vulnerability. A little bit more iframes on my dodges so that I don't have to be on point as often as I would otherwise. Honestly, it's not the biggest of deals, but it just helps so that I can enjoy combat more. Next, I've got the Yasukani Magatama. Again, the set bonus minus one is really helpful. Ailment affliction duration, so I don't have to worry about sloth or light being nearly as often. More key, so I can put out more stuff. Corruption accumulation is fits the theme that I've been working with, which is, and I'll get to that soon, using my corrupted weapons to be more aggressive. It's not so much about the damage, and again, I'll get to that when I get to the weapons, but it's about being able to maintain key levels as often as possible. Life recovery, Amrita absorption. Again, I don't really want to depend on elixirs or other sources of healing except my gear. The idea is just to plug, just get into combat and play. That's it, just plug and play. Lucky drop accessory so that I can hopefully get a better accessory, but again, it's not really necessary. Yata mirror is amazing. Deflecting projectiles with a timely guard is awesome. So yeah, I, I mean, being able to reflect things like Yoshitsune soars back at him is awesome. Key because I want more key. Corruption to corruption accumulation to facilitate my aggressive style. And then the two star stats, I guess, are damage boosts. I happen to find these naturally on a random Yatamera I looted in Dream of the Neo. Like, it was pretty wild. Or, or maybe it was even Dream of the Wise. I don't remember because this is a plus 18. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I've already talked about the grace. The scroll is actually scroll of the wise. I'm not using a scroll of the Neo. I'm not using a scroll of the damned because I haven't even hit the depths yet. I haven't even finished the underworld. So you might notice a theme, key consumption, key damage. The active skill damage is actually something I was trying to replace. I think I wanted something like more key or ethereal item drop rate. Um, I don't need the skill damage. The increased attack winded enemy is nice. It, it seems to work well for me in that I get like a 20% damage boost when I reduce an enemy's E to basically nothing. So it's just... It's nice to have a little bit of a buff so that I can do damage as I see fit. And again, I tailored this so that I could find just a sweet spot for me in terms of my damage. Let's get on to the range weapons and then I'll talk about the weapons. The range weapons are pretty meaningless. I like to have a cannon because in case I deal with the boss like Sakata Kintoki, I can just shoot him in the head and then I just got a bow just for whatever. You may be wondering, why am I using three pieces of Magatsuhi? Why am I not going all four the corruption benefits? And again, I don't really care about any damage boost. I do like the extra anima, but I am thinking of swapping this out for Izanami's Grace because the three piece bonus, and I think I can show you here. Let me see if I got an Izanami's Grace. I should have one. I think I was trying to find another one. Oh, do I not have it here? Of course I don't have it here. But I, oh, I just can't scroll because I'm an idiot. Okay, where is it? This is Izanagi's, where's Izanami's at? Here we go. So Izanami's Grace has this increased realm resistance or other realm resistance by plus 50. This is going to be far more impactful than say an extra anima. So that's why I want it and eventually I'll get that. I just need to get another piece of it. Now let's get to my weapons. So I like to use all the weapons and switch them out. But there is one theme you're going to notice is that they're all corrupted. 
And the reason for that is because the extra key damage you do against a corrupted target gets refunded to you. And so you can key pulse even sooner and get more key back. And so I really like that. Now you may notice on the sword for example, and this is going to serve as a template for all the weapons. I got corruption. I want to inflict corruption faster. I want to consume less key. I want to do more key damage. And then the only start stat that I really aim for is life drain active skill. And this is what allows me to be in the thick of combat without having to pause to use an elixir. So if I make a mistake and if I'm just going to decide to be reckless and aggressive or whatever, I can get enough health back. And if you've seen any of my highlights, you know that I, I try to be as active as possible. I play as quickly as possible and I use as many different skills as possible. So this works for me really, really well. That is literally the entire theme for all these weapons and I can show it to you. Even with these dual swords, I'm not even going for a matching grace if I happen to get it great. But it's just corruption, key damage, key consumption, life drain, active skill. That is what I'm always going for. With the exclusion of like, I mean you can see the sphere. Active skill, key damage is starred. Cool, I happen to find it. I think my hammer here and my odachi and I think maybe my tomfa, I'll just see. But you can see on this hammer, axe, skin, whatever, has spinning slide bonus key recovery. Again because I want to use as little key as possible. So that makes a big difference when I use spinning slide and it's pretty sweet. Sorry Gamma here, again the same thing, it has starred block cool, I don't feel like getting rid of it, I might, it's not really necessary but cool I guess. I like this specific Kusari Gamma because of the dash speed. Anything that speeds up my gameplay I will pretty much gravitate towards. Odachi, again the same thing, not even the matching grace. Key consumption, key damage, corruption, accumulation, and as with the axe, I get a key recovery bonus for using a specific action. With the Odachi, I use Sunset Breeze very frequently, so it per works with me perfectly. Tanfa. I got Star Break on here, which makes it pretty nutty. If I were to change this, I would probably change the Break to Life Drain Active Skill. I think this is the only weapon that doesn't have Life Drain Active Skill. Aside from Odachi, yeah, I think Odachi has it, doesn't have it, but yeah, again, I, I got, I'm, it's, they're all kind of the same. Hatchets, I got Life Drain Active Skill, the Amrita Urn versus Yokai is pointless, but what would I have in place of that? I guess I would just have Corruption Accumulation, but otherwise it's good to go. Like, I don't really care. Tate Abushi Switchglaive is really nice because of the faster movement on numbers of absorption against speed. I just want super speedy gameplay. I want to treat this like Ninja Gaiden. Everything else otherwise is pretty much the same. The grace isn't matching, but again, I really don't care. Blitzstaff. It's not even a part of a grace set. It's from Benkei's set. But I've got corruption, corruption accumulation, key damage. I've got a key recovery bonus for using a skill, and I've got key consumption. That's it. Then I've got fists. I haven't even filled up all the slots, but same thing. Key consumption, key damage, life drain, and opportunist bonus key recovery because it's pretty sweet to royal guard everything. That's pretty much it with, in terms of my gear. If there was things that I could do to improve it, I would most likely switch out the Pit Viper and Red Demon sets or that new Grace in the Depths. What is it? Shinatsu Hikos or something? I don't have a piece at all, but it's like... The seven piece bonus is minus 30% melee attack key consumption. I'm like, ah, I'm basically running like a budget version of that. So if I got, happen to get my hands on that one, that'd be pretty sick. But that's not going to be for a while. And honestly, I don't really need it. It's just at this point, pure luxury, luxury tier. It's just minor upgrades that can make things even easier. And I don't really need them to be. Now let's get on to my guardian spirit setups because those are pretty important to understand. Yume Hame is my primary guardian spirit. I use it, oh actually before I get to this, let me show you my stats. Ta-da, I don't give a shit about stat assignments. 87 in all stats at the time of this video. And yeah, that's, I, I don't care. I don't go for any of the ultimates. I don't need to. If I did, it'd probably make gameplay even better. I know players like Kagira Simano do this with things like ultimate stamina, ultimate courage, ultimate heart, um, ultimate constitution, and he basically has infinite resources. Especially considering he has like 25 anima, I'm like that's insane. But yeah, I'm, I don't really feel the need to do that, so I haven't. And just to illustrate that it's not necessary, and that this game is very flexible as well. But it's really because I'm lazy. But yeah, 87 all stats, my melee attack weapons, power is really not that high, and A agility, and yeah, B toughness. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention 
Because I'm using light armor, I have... What? Why did she do umbral bullet? Okay, interesting glitch. Cool. Moving on. One thing I've done with my equipment, you may notice at the bottom, it's kind of hard to show with the PlayStation controller. You may notice that I have actually remodeled my equipment to give me more defense, which is why they're all heavier. So yeah, I remodeled my equipment to give me more defense so that I could survive a bit more. Anyway, that was so weird. Why did I do Umbral Bullet? But yeah, that's 87 all stats. I got nearly 19 anima, which is great. And over 1600 key. So yeah, it works pretty well for me. It's pretty fun. Okay, let's get on to the Guardian Spirits. My primary is Yumehame. The main reasons for it are the key damage and key recovery. So that's pretty much it. But other things are really cool are the whole anima bonus on gold earned. So you kill an enemy and I think you get like 2-3 anima back, which is handy. Now let's get to the specific soul cores. Magatsu Warrior is awesome. It is pretty much what I use to deplete a ton of max key. And so that's what I have on it. Max yokai ability key damage. The increased attack yokai ability hit is pretty redundant. I don't really need it. I did happen to find an anima inherit, so I put that on there. I know this is a lower version, lower version, but it's still great. And then at rank 30, you get anima charge bonus cumulative damage of AA, which is pretty bonkers. So it's like combining the benefits of a feral garden spirit with a phantom garden spirit, and I can generate a lot more anima if I'm just in combat, like a ton. So it's great. And yeah, I love Magatsu Warrior. Oh yeah, one other thing, because I have life recovery on Amrita Absorption, when I use this Soul Core on, say, an enemy that's out of key, or even against someone if I'm using Extraction Talisman, I basically fill up my entire health bar. Another reason I don't have to worry about using Elixirs that often, which is great. Now, what about the next core? Next core is Aberrant Soldier Soul Core. I really like this one. I'm looking to upgrade this to an Ethereal. Here's what I like about it. One, the animation is sick for me. It's just my quick cancel core and reorients me to my target. It's great. I like that it has anima bonus and timely guard. Uh, that's actually why I want to upgrade this to an ethereal so I can get even more anima back. The Amrita gauge charge is pointless. I'm going to swap that for anima. Yokai ability key pulse. You absolutely want to have one of these per guardian spirit. So this is the core with the yokai ability key pulse and it's awesome and then max yokai ability key damage because that's great so yeah next up is ipon datra which is my good old reliable core i don't care about the locked special stats the attunement cost is i guess there but i actually got this core back in dream of the strong courtesy of players Arok and kagerasimaru and so it happened to have anima charge bonus gauge i think like rank b at base so it was really good, and as you can see here at rank 30, gives me AA. And since I don't use my gauge for anything really, aside for buffs, it's really handy. I don't pop Yokai Shift, and I can be really active, really in the thick of combat, and not really have to worry about managing my resources that much. I still have to have some intelligent use, but nothing too crazy. And then Anima, because what's not to love about extra Anima? If you don't know, Epon Dodge Truck and Stagger pretty much everything is also can avoid grabs can avoid sweep attacks and yeah it does a pretty modest amount of key damage as well so i really like it let's get to the secondary guardian spirit so there's two reasons i'm actually using this aside from the special effects you may notice that there's a highlighted special effect so for lore reasons because yumehame and baku are both from Atakimaru in some capacity you happen to get more max yokai ability key damage which is a pretty rare stat to get so I love it. Now let's get to the soul cores. Oops. Ah. Okay. So as a secondary spirit, it's brute. I like to have brute secondary spirits. And they share anima charge, which is nice. If I'm happening to use this for some time, I get some decent buffs, which are great. I can fill up my gauge with the Pleiades. And it just has good corruption support. So it happens to be perfect for me. But let's get to the cores. Ongyoki. The stealth is cool. Backstab damage is whatever. Anima charge, I'm probably going to try to swap this out for something else. And the Amrita bonus inflict scorch is pretty whatever. I was just seeing how high the anima charge can go with rank 30. But I really like Ongyoki because it's basically my pocket smoke bomb. 
or four anima. It is so good and it inflicts corruption. So it just, it really works well with how I play. So I really, really like it. And I'm still learning how to use this well, but it's so satisfying to pull off. Next is Shuten Doji. I like Shuten Doji, especially after the buffs. It's really fast, has pretty low recovery frames and inflict fire if I need it. And now I can give two buffs. On top of the increased defense, summer to absorption, you can get the Pleiades and you can get extraction. And then to top it off, this also happens to have the same anima charge bonus that my Epon does. And I'm hoping to get an ethereal of this to push the limits of that even further. So I don't have to worry so much about anima generation. It is pretty awesome. Last but not least, Scampus. It is actually pretty good. It has a roll animation and it gives me, and I have Yokai ability key pulse. This is my gap closer and I've actually really enjoyed working with it. It's a really speedy core and I know it's silly, but it's not to be underestimated. Yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to guardian spirits. Now let me go through my jutsu and whatever if you're interested in that. There, before I get into depth of that, there's really no point to a lot of it. I use elixirs because everyone uses elixirs except Zilad. I use the three Ninpo from Ninja Gaiden because I am a Ninja Gaiden fan. That's the only reason why I use it. It's not a matter of power. I don't care about any of that. I just want to play this game like I'm playing Ninja Gaiden, which is coming out June 10th, which is awesome. Extraction Talisman, which is a little redundant, but this has a longer duration than Shoot and Doji, so it's great. Uh, this, I was, I actually need to swap this out. What was in here? Probably Luminous Blade Talisman. But again, I just use like all the wonky stuff. I might swap this for pinwheel shuriken. I, it doesn't matter. I don't. I hardly use these. I might use rejuvenation talisman, but I don't really need to with my gear set up. And then there's earth folding in case I just want to go back to the shrine. I think that's it. I don't really know if there's anything else. But yeah, um, character's not particularly powerful, but it's very much intentional for me to do that. So. That's it. I don't know. I don't know what else to cover. I mean, I I use all the weapons. You can see my proficiencies here. I need to use axe a bit more, but I have no real need to. I just play however the hell I want. I don't care. I don't care about this meta stuff. I just play in the way that's most fun for me, and Neo allows me to do that, so it's great. You can even see here. I don't even spend my points. Frosty would kill me for the amount of unspent points I have. Why don't I just use my points? Because I'm an idiot and I'm lazy and I don't want more damage. If I feel the need for more damage, I'll put points here. And then I'll upgrade my weapons. But right now as it is, I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm at. I find I kill enemies and kill bosses a little too quickly, so... I'm just, I'm just, you know, figuring shit out on the fly. And this is what's fun for me. But in any case, enough about me rambling. Hopefully this was an informative video for you to see why I have the setup that I do as well as what you could do to improve upon it. And again, it, that's gonna depend on the player, but you can do whatever you want in this game and that's what makes it so damn awesome. In any case, thank you guys for watching. Hope this was, hope, God, I'm tongue tied. I talk about this shit too much. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. It might inspire you to try a bunch of new things so you can have fun. I'll see you guys next time.